Today we'll be looking at different techniques that you can do with watercolour. The first thing that we'll be doing is mm -hmm. taping our paper down to our board. This board I've just covered in some clear contact. It was just a piece of um, cardboard that I had. Now we're going to need paper, some watercolours. We're going to be using some rock salt but you could probably just use some normal, ordinary salt. We're using some rubbing alcohol. We are using water, a clean, fresh jar of water, and a largish round paintbrush. And this is called a pipette, or you can use an eyedropper. And we're using a white crayon, one of those twisty crayons. You can use any color crayon if you like. We also need some masking tape. The first thing that we're going to do is tape down our piece of watercolour paper. Now the reason that we tape it down, the main reason that I tape mine down is so when you add the water, paper tends to buckle a bit, tends to go quite wrinkly and what the tape does, it just kind of helps stretch the paper out a little bit, it helps um, just keep it in place and helps keep the paper quite flat. So when I tape down my watercolour paper, I make sure that I don't put too much of the tape on the actual paper because the more tape that covers the paper, the more chance there is of it tearing when we take it off. So generally I just maybe have a border of about four or five millimeters so just half a centimeter or less is what I kind of aim for. I make sure that I tear around it. This masking tape is pretty old so it's lost quite a bit of its tackiness so I don't really need to take away the tackiness from um, dabbing it on on my jeans or trousers or whatever I'm wearing at the time. So I'm just putting mine straight on but if yours is not really quite sticky you might want to just get some of the tackiness off on some old clothes or a tea towel or something like that. So the very first section that I'm going to do with you and that we're all going to do together is um, a, a technique that you need to paint your little section with water first of all. So make sure that you totally cover it. This is actually a fun technique, this one, but you need to make sure that you do have some water down. The next thing that you're going to be doing is you need to choose a watercolour. Now when you use watercolour, dip your paintbrush in the water and swish your watercolour paintbrush around in the pan to get maximum paint on your paintbrush. And then just dab over the top of that. What you're trying to do is just to cover that paper. You can choose to do one colour. I am using two different colours. First off I used a purple, second up I'm using um, a, a blue. It's not a very dark blue, it's quite a light blue. So I'm doing the same. I'm, I'm putting my paintbrush in the water and I'm giving the paintbrush a really good swirl in the pan to pick up as much of the paint as I possibly can. This technique works when you use dark colours the best. It's, it, um, it works much better with the darker colours. So I'm trying to get as much paint and use quite, um, make my little section quite dark. Just covering up the little white parts where some of the paint hasn't actually spread out to. That's looking pretty good right now. So the next thing that I'm going to use is the rubbing alcohol and I'm just, I only need a very tiny little bit. So I just tip a little bit in that. If you're a child, um, you might like to ask a parent to do this part for you or somebody that's older. I just suck up a little bit of the alcohol into the pipette and I'm going to do one drop, that's it. One little drop and watch the magic that happens. Look at that. How gorgeous is that? What happens, the alcohol that's in the liquid there actually just pushes away all the pigment in the watercolour paint. 
creates a lovely pattern there, circular patterns. Just drops, tiny little drops. I've used the smallest amount of rubbing alcohol to do this. And it creates all these lovely shades of purples and blues where it's actually um, dropped out. So I just get rid of the excess back in the lid and I'll end up just tipping that little bit that's left over on a, on a dry tissue. Too hard to get back in. Okay, the second technique is called crayon resistance. So you can just do some patterns. You can write your name. I'm just doing a little circle and then a larger circle, a bit like a target kind of looking um, symbol. You just use white crayon. It doesn't have to be rolly crayon. It can be another wax kind of white crayon. You can even use different colours, but the white kind of makes it look magic because it looks like there's nothing there at the moment. But when you finish a pattern and when you paint over the top with a colour, and yet again, with all these techniques, it seems to work much better when you use a, like quite a dark colour. So here is where the magic happens. You get some watercolour and notice I did not paint my piece with water. You can if you like. But I think it just, I don't know, looks more magical when you don't do it. It turns out a bit darker. But you can try it, pre-painting it with water. It does work. I have done it before. So either way, you can um, paint it with your water first and then paint the watercolour over the top. Or you can just make sure that you get enough water on your paintbrush and then mix it into the watercolour paints. Make sure you get enough to give good coverage on on that little section there. And then we have some water, oh sorry, not water, crayon resistance um, technique. So I just go over that to make sure that I cover all the little white bits. A little bit of the crown didn't work out, so I just dab over that again. And there it is, that's called crayon resistance technique. And I think that looks pretty good. It would look cool if you could like write secret messages or um, pattern work looks really lovely when you use a, a crown resistance technique. The next technique that we will be doing, we need to dampen down or paint with water the next little section. Make sure that you cover the whole area. Make sure that you make it wet but not dripping wet. So you want it to be evenly covered. Next thing you need to do is, yet again, choose a nice dark colour. And I'm choosing dark as well to show you. It comes up much more clearly in the video. You can use any colour you want, but I like seeing um, the contrast in, in these. So that's why I use dark darker colours. So I've done the same, dipped the paint brush into the water, then swirling, swirl my paint brush, give it a good swirl and get as much color out of the pans as I possibly can. So I've used a couple of blues here. You don't have to do the same colors as me. You can choose whatever colors you like. I make sure that I get plenty of paint on this. I want it to be dark. I want it to be rich in color. I want to make sure that most of it is covered in the paint, but I still want a little bit of depth. I, you know, I want a little bit of variation in the color as well. So this one, we use the rock salt, or you can use some ordinary salt, but we use rock salt, and I think it works a little bit better with rock salt. It's a little bit more, the end result is a little bit more dramatic. You just get a little bit of the salt while the watercolour is still wet. All of these techniques, you need to have them still wet. And what I do is just drop down onto that little section that I've painted some of the rock salt. And you can see there's quite a bit of rock salt there. Now the trickiest part for this one is you have to leave it there to dry. So you have to wait until that is totally dry before you do the next step with the rock salt technique. And the last technique we're going to do is, again, I've painted, there's two I've painted without pre-wetting or without pre-painting with water. This one you do not paint with water. I'm just painting directly 
onto the dry paper with my paintbrush. Obviously, I've dipped the paintbrush in some water and I've swirled. You can see my green has a little bit of the packaging foil still on it, so I'm doing my best to get to the colour part there. I'm painting that whole section as evenly as I can to begin with, with that lovely, it's almost like a jade green. I'm sure it's called some special name, but I don't know what it's called. It's, it's a really lovely green. So I make sure I get reasonably even coverage with that. Now, the technique that we're doing for this one is quite similar to the rubbing alcohol one, except this one, we're using plain, clean water. And I just get a little bit at the tip of my fingers and I just flick it onto the piece of paper. And you can see it does a similar thing, as, as I said, not as dramatic as the rubbing alcohol, but it does the same. The water kind of pushes, pushes away the pigment in the paints and you get all this lovely variation in the colouring. And that's it there, dried a little bit more. And I'm just, it, that's actually almost dried there and I've just flicked a little bit more water on it. Now finally, and very slowly, remembering the 90 degree rule when we take off the masking tape. Uh, I've done the cross in the middle just so it's given it nice little, um, a nice little frame around each technique. Very slowly and carefully, <clears throat> excuse me, peel away the masking tape. A couple more edges to go. I think they look quite nice. I think my favourite one is the rock salt one, but I really do love the process of the rubbing alcohol one and you can have loads of fun with the crown resistance one and the water one is lovely for using um, as you know showing a liquid effect a movement effect like that one's really good to to show the sea or the sky so almost done last piece of tape there it goes now this is totally dry the rock salt so just with your hand carefully rub all of the rock salt off. So what happens, the rock salt actually absorbs some of that watercolour paint and we are left with this gorgeous effect. So there's the crown resistant one, that's the rubbing alcohol dropper and that one is just flicking plain old water over the top and we're done. Here we have some close-ups. So here's the lovely red water resistant technique. Next we have the lovely purpley rubbing alcohol technique. This lovely green plain old water flicking technique. And the last one, the gorgeous blue, blue technique using rock salt. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, please like and subscribe and see.